us to be home. I was in Melbourne last weekend, <clears throat> preaching at two churches down there and doing a leadership uh, thing thingy, and uh, missed home. Really, I miss home, Shoo. and I miss my wife. It's only ten sleeps, I think, till she comes home now. So, uh, I don't want to cuddle you, Tony. You don't. <laughs> You're the least looking like my wife. If you said Kathy can come cuddle me, it's okay, Putty. <laughs> but not you. Ish. Can you imagine waking up beside Tony in the morning? Good God. <laughs> Kathy is a man of, woman of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be home. So, what I want to minister to you uh, today is something to flow on from Pastor Sean over the last couple of weeks. I don't think they've got the title. Hearing His Whisper. I want you to um, with me because a lot of times we ask, do we need to be led? Do we need to be led by Him, the person of the Holy Spirit? Do we need to be led? And the answer is yes. If Jesus needed to be led, then we need to le be led. Amen? And so that's what I want to do. I've got a, really a message in two halves. I, I want to talk about how he was led and what that means. And then what I want to do is I, I want to uh, show you how to do it. Some practical things that may be from Scripture that I, I have learned uh, in, in the time I've been serving the Lord to, to come. Because hearing him is really hit and miss sometimes. Amen? And, and because we're all individuals, because we're all different, God will lead us, but there are some basics that we need to know about the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, <clears throat> I wrote a little comment to myself about intimacy with Him, comma, possession by Him, obedience to Him equals success. Intimacy, possession, obedience to Him and to the person of the Holy Spirit is success in every area of life. If you will listen to Him, and as I go through it this morning, I hope you will, because first we talk with Him, and then we will walk with Him, and then we will work for Him. Amen? And so when God moves, and He does move, or when we move, He moves. So many times we think that we're waiting for God to do something, when we are, He is actually waiting for us to do something. He's waiting for us to move, and He will join with us. When you think about the Lord Jesus Christ, um, and what He did... God moved powerfully during his time on the earth, but God did not move by himself. He moved through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And when you look at that, you don't have to go to John 21, 25. It says, even the world itself could not contain the books that will be written if we realized what Jesus has actually been done. And you know the scripture is very clear. It says, we should be walking the same way. <clears throat> 1 John 2, 6 says this. Let's do it, it'll read it in the Amplified, 1 John 2, 6. I think that's what I had, yeah. Whoever says, says, <laughs> says, whoever says he abides in him ought to, as a personal debt, think about this, it's a personal debt from us to God to walk as abiding in him. We ought to walk and conduct himself in the same way in which he walked and conducted himself. You know, when you think about it, you may think that's a great big state, statement. And did, did Jesus walk around? Did he need help to do miracles? Did he need help from the Father? Yes. He listened and he walked. When you think about it, Jesus gave us the answer. How did he do what he did? This is what we've got to look at. John 5, 19 in the King James. Very, very, I say unto you, who, who the... Unto you, the Son can do nothing of Himself but what He sees the Father do. For what things soever He does, that does the same likewise. And then I had it written down to go to the Amplified. I think you've got the Amplified there, guys. Hey? John 5.19. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, the Son is able to do nothing of Himself of His own accord. But he is able to do only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does is what the Son does in the same way in his turn. When Jesus walked upon the earth, <coughs> he only did, he only said, he only moved when the Father told him to move. And how the Father told him to move. Is that what Scripture says? We're not taking things out of context. Jesus heard 
He saw and he did. Amen? And so the question is, with that statement, we can be doing the same. I'm going to give you five comments <coughs> from the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I'll give you the scripture references. Number one, I can of my own self do nothing. Number two, my teaching is not mine, but him who sent me. Number three, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to the will of him that sent me. Four, for I always do those things which please, that please him. And number five, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me commandment, what I should say, what I should speak. For reference of the tape, and if you're watching by live stream, welcome. They come from John 5.30, John 7.16, John 6.38, John 8.29, and John 12.49, for the sake of the tape, if I'm the new King James. So, <coughs> Jesus' whole life was a reflection of what he saw and what he heard the Father tell him. Is that correct? Absolutely everything. Not just the miracles, but the day-to-day -day walking of his life that we are supposed to walk is exactly the same. <coughs> um, he never had his own agenda. And he lived, and there's a word I'm going to give you now, he lived in response to God. Remember, Jesus wasn't living in the heaven. He was living on earth just like us. He couldn't see God with his natural eyes, if you like, couldn't hear him with his natural ears. But he responded. Go to Isaiah 11. He responded in a, ma responded in a manner to God that you and I have to. Isaiah chapter <coughs> 11. Excuse me. <coughs> Verse 3. I want to read from the Amplified. And shall make of him quick understanding, and his delight shall be in the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither decide by the hearing of his ears. Well, how did he judge? How did he do these things? What was it? And it's that word was, was response. The Holy Spirit revealed to Jesus what the Father was doing. Holy Spirit told him what the Father was saying. And G Jesus simply responded to what the Holy Spirit had put in his heart. Now, let's think about two things. How many of us make mistakes when we react? Come on. Okay, let's ask the question again. How many of you and me make mistakes when we just react? We all do. The Word of God is very clear that Jesus never reacted to anything. He responded. Reaction is an unthinking action. A response is a thinking quality decision that I'm going to respond in a certain manner to something. Amen? And, and you know, when we react to things, it can destroy and ruin your marriage, your home, your job, your church, no matter whatever. And we've all done it. The thing is that we can repent, but we've got to understand that Jesus wants you to be in tune with the Holy Spirit in order that you will respond as the Word of God wants you and His character wants you. We've got to shine for Jesus and respond the right way. Is that right? We're not going to be a church that reacts. We are going to be a church that responds because that's the way Jesus lived every day of His life. And we're equipped to live the same way, church. By the Holy Spirit leading him in his earthly ministry, the same Holy Spirit is living in us to take us on a day-to-day, -day, moment by moment, time by time, um, walk with God. And to the degree that we tune in and respond to what he puts in our hearts, what he whispers in our hearts, we'll be able to move in this world. We'll be able to express him and himself through us. Amen? Because we're responding in His character according to what He has told us what to do. Amen? I've got to hear a little leading brings big results. You know why? Because the problem with most of us, including me, is that we aren't paying as much attention as we should do to those subtle promptings and to the whispers of God. A lot of the time, we're going around thinking, well... He's going to hit us with a lightning bolt. The heavens are going to open or something magnificent and huge will happen. But listening to the Holy Spirit and listening to His whisper doesn't include that. The Holy Spirit will usually begin to draw your heart towards something and He'll give you a little nudge and He'll give you a little whisper. And it's what you do with those. <clears throat> when I was, was preparing, I thought of an example that happened. In 1983, um, 
I, I, I've been knowing the Lord some of the new, longer than you've been alive, unfortunately, which is real now. But in 1983, I was sitting in front of my TV out near what is a place called Lancera Airport in Johannesburg. And <clears throat> at that time, I was watching rugby, okay? I was watching rugby sitting on the floor. It was a team called Transvaal, as they were then. And they were losing as they were in those years always. They, they weren't very good. So I'm sitting reading a paper, and I'm watching because the game is not very good, okay? You know I love rugby. And suddenly the Lord speaks to me, okay? It was 1983. I've been, I've been saved. No, no, it was 1984. I've been saved about a year. And he spoke to me, and he said, um, I want you to go to Bible school. And I went, oh, okay. And that was as simple as that. I want, to go to I want you to go to Bible school. So I put my paper down, turned around to my wife, Diane, who you know is so gentle and hears God. So she's reading a paper. I said, darling, and she put a paper down. I said, God's just told me we're to go to Bible school. And she looked at me just like you are, and she went, he hasn't told me, and started reading the paper again. <laughs> we started Bible school in January 85. But the purpose of that is that we came here in 1998, halfway around the world, because God said. That was a product of the little obedience to the little things that he tells us to do. Little things lead to big things. I don't expect him to put you a pastor of 5,000 if you haven't run five. Don't expect him to put you into a business unless he's trained you and equipped you the way you should go. There are times and seasons of growth. So with him, listening to him, hearing him, doing what he says, will take time. Step by step, line upon line, precept upon precept. And that's just an example where God wants us to get us in our obedience. And maybe you wouldn't want to go halfway around the world, but how about halfway around the block? How about halfway across the room? Would you respond to him by making small changes at home and at work that he prompts you to make? Come on. The Holy Spirit was whispered to you about changes he wants in every area of your life. If you will begin to respond to him, you will begin to have the business, the marriage, the home, the relationships, whatever it is, when you begin to listen to the whisper of God. Because that's where it starts. Amen? And so, when he does that, he's living inside us, so he goes with you wherever you go. If you'll tune in, tune in to him, it'll make every place better. With these little leadings, I believe what this happens every day. Eventually, your faith will grow stronger, and you can go on to a different level with God. Now, we know that faith cometh by hearing, is that right? And hearing by the Word of God. But you know what happens? You can keep reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. Faith coming, but faith not growing. Faith grows, and growth is dependent on you doing. Is hearing and doing and being obedient to the hearing. If you go to Hebrews 11, bless you. If Hebrews 11 of the heroes of faith, they didn't get there just because they heard and believed. They got there because they heard, believed, and they did. We as a church have got to hear, believe, and do. Pastor keeps telling us, each one, reach one, bring one, do one. We are heritage. Amen. So come on. Every seat to be filled in the house. Amen. That's the doing part of hearing and loving your church and your Lord. Remember, I, I, I taught at the weekend and I was saying to people, in children's ministry, it's the simplest thing to work in children's ministry. They say, why? Because you just teach children and they receive you. But the key with children is first I learn to love my teacher. Then I learn to love my teacher's Lord. We don't have to preach to them. We don't have to do anything to them. We just have to love them. And your neighbor and your family and these, you just love them. And the love of God will never fail you. You will be then doing the word. And it will increase with what God's going to bring to you. Amen. <clears throat> So, I believe that we'll grow, and, and faith will grow, and we will do extraordinary things because God is in us. He can move through us, take us anywhere. Go to Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. And it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears and listens and, and, to, and heeds my voice, heeds what? My voice. 
and opens the door, I'll come into him and we'll eat with him and he will eat with me. Jesus is saying to us today, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. Jesus is waiting for us to respond to him, waiting to us to respond to the whisper of Holy Spirit. Because you do understand the Holy Spirit, Jesus is here, but the overseer of the church and the power of God on the earth today is Holy Spirit. That's who it is. And when we relate to him, he will always tell us about Jesus and the Father. Amen. But he's saying, open the door. When I knock, open the door. When I knock, respond. When I knock, come along with me. Because you know what? When he says, I'll come and abide with you, I want Jesus to live with me 24 hours a day. Isn't that lovely? You don't have to worry about anything when he's there. But there's something else he wants to do through us. He wants to be, come into us so that he can go out and express himself to the world through us. So first he comes in. He invests and he invades our life. And then by the power of God, we go out and show him to the world. Because you do realize we're the only Jesus they're going to see. And sometimes I have to catch myself and say, oh, my Lord, what have I done? When we make mistakes, okay? So we want people to be able to see him. I believe today in this first half of the message, we can see that Jesus was led and guided. His power came through the Holy Spirit, through the Father. He did nothing of himself except what he saw. Because in Hebrews 3.15, the Lord tells us to not harden our heart. And I want to just read that to you, 3.15. But then while it is still called today, if you were to hear his voice, and when you hear it, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the desert, when the people provoked and irritated, embittered God against them. You know, the, the Israelites didn't enter into the promised land because they hardened their hearts. They didn't obey him. But not what he's saying to us. Don't harden your heart. Don't just go, oh, I don't know whether that's God. Step out. Step out. All you can do is make, make a little bit of a mistake. Step out in here. You've got a word on your heart. Bring it to the pastors at the front. Do you think you've got something to share with somebody in the congregation? Bring it to us. We'll judge it and say, come, we'll go with you. We'll start to increase when we start talking and, and teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We mustn't be afraid of making a mistake because to fail is not failure. Failure is only happen when you quit. Don't quit. We're a no-quit church, eh? I'm no-quit. I thought last weekend these people were going to kill me. I mean, I worked all Saturday and then went counseling and then went to lunch and then worked Saturday night and then I got up and did the service in the morning and then I counseled afterwards and then I went to lunch and then I went home and think, oh my God, I want to do this, man. Who wants to be a traveling preacher? Then I had to preach in the evening. Serious. But you know what? Let me tell you. I I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to tell you. You know, in the hotel, they put me in. Lovely people. It was was nice. Beds were soft. But yeah, I walked in. There was no cable. I'm serious. Talk about getting a spoiled brat. There was no cable. And there was no room, room service. You laugh. You've just traveled, and you get there, and, and, and you think, well, I've got to, I want to eat. Nothing. <laughs> the reason I'm telling you that, but you know what? I so enjoyed being there. My wife wasn't there to hug me. My wife wasn't there to shout at me. I just sat. There was nothing I could do. No TV. It was only Channel 9 and Channel 10. Do you know how many adverts there are on Channel 9 and Channel 10? Every two minutes. But what I did, switched it off. And I spent more time in the Word. And you know what happened? I'm not saying I don't spend time in the Word for this and for you guys. But as I'm preaching and I'm listening now, the reason I'm telling this story is that it came back up out of my heart. I'm preaching. I'm ministering on leadership for the whole morning for three hours. And things, I just went off on this rabbit trail, this rabbit trail. When I was going one-on-one with people, it was coming up out of my heart. And what it teaches us to do is that we are to listen to the Spirit while we're talking to one another. The Holy Ghost must tell us. We don't just want our Word. We want His Word. We want His Word to come up, and it's a Word in due season for that, that person. The other thing that happened to me, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I used to preach for years. Before we opened the church for about four years, I was preaching out. And it's not that I didn't enjoy it. I just, it wasn't like it was me, okay? Maybe I wasn't mature enough. Maybe I wasn't good enough. I I have no idea. But this last weekend, I want to tell you, I want to thank you all for encouraging me, for the people who prayed for me. 
because it was like a different anointing. It was like preaching in front of you guys. I didn't care because you know when you guys are guest speaker, please be nice to Cole Stringer because you know what happens. You look at him like they looked at me last weekend. What has he got? What can he bring? And what's he going to do? Now that used to intimidate me. Not this time. I've been in front of you guys for too long. Doesn't matter what anybody does. I can, I can handle that because we have grown by listening to the voice of the Spirit when we're up here, when we're down here. Come on. You'll catch something from this. If you will start to do it when you're in here, in the safety with your pastors, if you start to flow with the Holy Spirit when you hear something, come and share it with us. Because we will help you grow. That's what we're for. Amen. Maybe you're sitting there and I wrote myself another question from you. Really? Can God really use me? Yes. And God today, if you're asking that question, God really does want to use you. And the reason for that, scripturally, in 1 John 4, 17, it's not in your notes, but a couple of weeks ago I said, it says, as he is in this world, so are you. So are we. And so if he can walk like this, we can walk like this. You're going to make a decision. I am going to walk like Jesus. But grow to Romans 8, 14. I think it's 14. In Romans 8, 14, it says, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And in, in that scripture, um, it's the word huos. And in the Passion Translation, huos means mature. Mature children of God are those um, moved by the impulses of Holy Spirit. In other words, maturity is actually listening and doing. Because you can have five-year-olds, you can have little kids, you can have people who've just got saved, and they hear something, they go and do it. There's a maturity that God wants to bring to us that we will hear Him and we will do as He says, church. And you can because you're born again. If you're, if you're not born again here today, you'll have the opportunity. You will have the opportunity to do that. But we're a church that says we can, we want to use you. God wants to use you and move through you. Amen? So I believe you can do everything he's told us to do. I believe we can walk like Jesus, hearing God in everything. And I believe that he will show us. Okay, so scripture, if you need the, the CD or tape or MP3 or whatever it is, just go to the place and order it because I've been quite, quite quick with this. But the second half of this is becoming still. Becoming still. Becoming still. I was very blessed that yesterday I was, um, I was giving something from fa on Facebook from Lorna Vasa. Lorna Vasa is a, is a well-known prophet, prophetess of God. She was using the same words in her prophetic utterance for this week that God gave me about the whisper of God, about being quiet before God and being still before God. And I said, Lord, I'm hearing you because we need to hear him. And so the first thing in hearing him, we need to become still. Uh, in Psalm 46.10, it says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Other translations say, cease striving, let go, relax, and know that I am God. Often we miss, as we start this journey, now sometimes, some of you have been around a long time, okay? Been around a long time. Uh, and, and you may know this stuff, but there are some people here who don't. When you're starting this walk, it is better for you to get to a place of quietness, okay? You want to be still. You want to still everything. It's very much like when I first went out with Diane, my wife. You know, we've been together 53 years now. And, and then... I used to have to be quiet to listen to her because I didn't know her voice. Now, she can just say, Ian, like that, in a crowded, noisy room, and I will know her voice. No matter where we are, no matter who we are with, I know the voice of my wife. That's how we've got to become with the voice of Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter, but you need to start off quietly. And you say, why? Because it helps not to have noise around. In fact, in Habakkuk, Habakkuk, it's not in your nose, guys. Habakkuk went to his guard post to pray in um, Habakkuk 2.1. Jesus departed to a lonely place in Mark 1.35. And in the same uh, passage, he, Jesus used to go up to the mountain to pray. So we need to have a place 
to come to to be still. So the first thing you need to do is you need to remove external distractions. Find a place where you can be alone. And you say, but I've got three children. Get up. I understand. Five minutes earlier in the morning, come and be still. Come and start your day with God rather than the devil. Not the children the devil. I'm saying the devil. I mean the world. So, sorry. So I didn't mean the ladies' children. If you've got children, they're not the devil, okay? <laughs> sorry. But you know what I mean? So you, you want to start. If, it, if, you are, if you're busy, you've got to find a place. Uh, Tony and, and Sean's place is a motorbike. Because uh, Sean now has a puppy in his house. He has no peace in his home. He has to get on his motorbike to go peacefully. Okay, mine used to be on a horse. I don't ride so much now, but it was always on a horse. God would always ride with me. It was amazing because we had that connection in, in everything, amen? But we need a place. So let me ask you a question. What's your place so that you can center down and focus on Him? Where's your place this morning? Is it the beach? Is it the garden? Is it the veranda? Is it the car? Where, where would it be? Secondly, that's the external. Then internally, we've got to quiet the voices. How many of you know, as soon as you start to pray, you think of a hundred things? As soon as you sit down to have some quiet time with the Lord, a hundred things. Amen? And we've got to get you quiet. Isaiah 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Are you getting something? I hope so. There was, there was two of you. We're going to go over it again until you get it. You know that? No lunch. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both in its inclination and its character, is stayed on you. Because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently. That's what we do in our God. I, I looked up some other translations, and it talks about perfectly peaceful, perfect and constant peace, true peace, complete peace, fortified peace. Amen? So that's what we can aim for. We can look at quieting ourselves in Isaiah. He's going to give us that peace. The first thing you can do is you can write them down. Those thoughts that come when you're sitting down, just simply have a pad, write it down. Because a thought captured is not lost. You can tell your brain to shut up. And it does. It, it, it's amazing. You, 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 you've got to think of something else, and I'm going to get to that. But when you write those things down that are, are hacking you, and you go, no, I'm not thinking about that. I've written it down. I'll get to it later. Write it down. The second thing, you can quiet your inner members by, by focusing on Jesus. Okay? This is not new age. This is spiritual. Okay? Because some people think visualization is new age. It has got no such thing. Okay? You can open your eyes, and we know there are seeing in the Spirit. There are spiritual visions. But just as an act of your will, you can center yourself and envision Jesus. For instance, maybe you're looking for a healing. And remember the woman who issued her blood? What was Jesus' attitude? And what you do is you take your mind and you begin to focus on Jesus in that scene. He's crowded. Okay, Jesus, it must be a bit noisy. It's a bit sweaty. It's a bit, oh, Lord, what is it? And you can see him walking. And suddenly there's a woman behind you. And you see a woman coming. You begin to visualize because that is a principle of God. It's a principle of vision. Because as soon as I say, um, I don't want you to think of a big black dog. What do you all think about? Big black dog. It, it's one of those things. So we're going to think about Jesus. We're going to vision. We're going to center him. We're going to behold him. We're going to behold him in a vision. We're going to behold him in seeing this thing. Because what I'm doing is trying to get you to a place where you can quiet and become peaceful in him. Amen? And so as we do that, you will quieten yourself. It will bring your inner attention to the Father. Third thing you can do. It happens to me mostly in the morning. You know when you wake up in the morning? Just think about your breathing, how quiet it is. Okay? And when I get up in the morning, very often, because I'm always singing, I'll have a song in my heart, and I'll start singing something. I continue to sing that, much to the annoyance of my wife, and it used to be my children when they live with me. Dad, do you have to sing at this time in the morning? Can't help it. It's the cry of my heart at that time. My heart is singing unto the Lord, not me. My heart is crying to Him. 
And it's saying, Lord, I love you so much. I want to worship you from the moment I wake up. The other thing that happens when you are searching your heart is that a word will come up, often with me in the, in the mornings. Go and get up. And what happens? Scripture will come up. And I go, okay. And I'll go over and over and over that Scripture. And you know what? Nine times out of ten, I will meet somebody during the day that that Scripture is exactly for them. Your heart knows things that are coming before you do. What we're doing is tapping in. We've quietened outside. We've focused inside. And now we can see the searching and the cry of our heart for the Lord. A spontaneous song or a word will change us. The other thing is quite natural. Is that your body, okay? If you said to me, Pastor Ian, come pray. Let's get down on our knees and pray. Forget it. The only thing I hear, I hear when I get down on my knees to pray is my knees. Okay? I am sorry. I need to sit comfortably. All right? When we come on a Thursday and I'm praying on intercession and the Holy Spirit just moves, great. But if I have to pray, normally I want to sit quietly and I want to sit comfortably. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay? Because you've got to quieten your body. Because otherwise sometimes your body gets hold of itself. And you know what happens? You calm your body by breathing. Everybody breathe. So we breathe in Christ and we breathe out self. Breathe in Christ, breathe out self. We're not umming, umming and all that other funny stuff. But what you do is you breathe in Christ and what settles. Now, you know my, my settled heart rate last year, last week, was an average of 48 my resting heart rate is 48 average throughout the week. My heart rate right now, when we're in praise and worship, I looked, it was 129. And right now it's only 88. It used to be when I would get up to preach, my heart rate would be off the charts and I have a job catching my breath. Because you become anxious. And people say, but you don't look anxious. No, no, I've been doing this 35 years. My God, if I was still anxious. No, but I do become nervous of hearing God. But it's a good nervousness because it means I'm not trusting myself. I'm not up here by myself. Even though I make the jokes and the something, it's not about me. So I've found that I can breathe in the pure spirit of Christ and breathe out self. Be still and know, church. Stillness is not a goal in itself. I want to become still in mind and body to do this so that my heart can know and sense the real me. This is which is in me. So I'm in becoming still. I'm not trying to do anything. I simply want to be in touch with my divine lover. I simply want to be in touch with Christ. I simply want to get to know him by being quiet. I simply want to know the one who is everything. And then hopefully, as we grow in this, now what happens? And it doesn't happen to, to me all the time, just some, some time. I like to say it happens all the time, doesn't it? Because we get caught up with things. But then we can become like John says in Revelation. He said, then I was in the Spirit. There's a time when you, you are the one doing things and you're setting. But there is a time when you've, you've calmed and you're just listening. And suddenly you know the very presence of God comes. It can happen corporately. This is why the unity and, you know, I just talk about our pastors. We have one vision for the church, four individual couples, but all with one vision to do. Does that mean that we all believe exactly and we do things exactly the same way? Why? Absolutely not. No, I couldn't be like <laughs> Mrs. Down the Front here. But Megs is different. I'm different. Kathy's different. We're all different, but we have one vision, one heart, one unity, one desire. Because you know the easiest thing I wrote. I wrote it here. I'm going to take on that. We'll jump pages. I wrote ministry after anointed and Jesus directed and centered worship is so easy. That's what happens. What, what happens is they have set the platform, and we have come in here. Only as a church, the only thing we're here to do is to worship and adore Him. When you come in, it's like coming into a dance. We've come in to be with the one who is our partner, 
We've come in for a divine dance with him. And you say, but that's a bit soft. Yes. He gave his life for us. He gave a life for you and me that we have life, life more abundantly. So when we come in here, the only thing we can give to Christ is our adoration, is, is the joy of being with him. And so when we come in and this team leads us, and that's their job, they're to worship him, but they lead us, they present a, a, a platform for us to, to worship. Oh, my Lord. You can't believe how easy it is for us and how blessed we are to have that team, to have this. Seriously. That's why it's so important. I encourage you. Pray for your worship team. Pray for your pastors. But pray for your worship team. Because you know what happens? If, if, if the enemy can't get the pastors, he's going to go for your worship team. Because you don't really want me up here worshiping every Sunday. With a we, had, we, we had one guitar and a tambourine when we first started. <laughs> ah, you, you wouldn't last too long. Well, maybe you would. But that's what we're doing. Pray for the worship team that they stay in order, that they stay right before God. Pray for your pastors. And the way you pray for them is when you're sitting down in your quiet time. Bring Jesus to remembrance of him walking up and down. Bring Jesus to remembrance when the disciples came back and they said to him, Master, even the demons are subject to us. And he leapt for joy. He leapt for joy. Jesus is not a, a, a softy. He leapt for joy. They said, begin to see him leaping for joy with us here this morning. Can I have the worship team to come, please? I'm, I'm going to finish with this. And the reason I want to just confirm so that you're not sitting there thinking, What's, what was Pastor doing? This is what I'm saying to you. In 2 Kings 3.15, Elisha said this to his team. He said, but now bring me a minstrel. And it came about when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus saith the Lord. When our team gets up here and plays, it takes me to another place. Just like it did with Elisha. And this morning, the Lord did something a, a, a little different with me. I've got... Notes. But what he did was I got through my notes. I was reading. I'm about to um, uh, have a break. But on a break, I've been listening for a lot to Natasha Cobb on Fill Me Up. And I got through and I thought, oh, I think I know what I do. I think I'll listen to, to that just for a break. I, I, I just want to worship you, Lord. So we go into my computer and go into YouTube and you click on YouTube. Now, because I've been listening to it every day, Natasha Cobb, you know, that phone, fill me up. It should come up in favorites. It normally comes up as the first one. And it didn't. And a song came on, which was called, what was it called? It was Natasha Cobb with somebody else. And it says, a song called, You Know My Name. It's been listened to 36 million times. I've never heard of it. Yeah. But I was led. Oh, I think I want to worship. I think I want to go that way. But God fiddles with my computer. You know, maybe you don't think he can fiddle with your computer, but he fiddles with mine because always Natasha Corb comes up with fill me up. Didn't happen. And then I, lost, I looked at that and I went, and the words of this song, I don't know whether it's a song that we can. Have you heard it? Okay. Can you sing it? <laughs> no, it's okay. Sorry, that's really putting you on the spot. Uh, I was going to send it to you, but, but I, next time. What I'm saying to you is in your business, in your home, and in your family, there will be a place that you can come to to hear him. Now, firstly, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I just want to ask that question this morning. Is there anybody here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We don't know everybody that's here. I don't personally. Answer me there. Is there anybody here that will raise their hand and say, you know what, Ian, I need Jesus in my life so I can be able to worship him, to relate to him, to hear him. And even if you're listening by live stream, I want to just offer that to you as well. You say, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me brand new. Thank you for dying for me. I will serve you now, Lord. I thank you for your death, your burial, your resurrection for my sake alone. Amen. If there's nobody here, next time, bring people. 
But I wrote some notes. So it's intimacy, possession, and obedience, which equals success. But today, more than ever, we need to hear the whisper of His voice. We need to hear His whisper, church. And so I said, Lord, what, what, what do you want me to do? I believe that He wants to be more with you than you want to be with Him. And there are those of you here that maybe haven't heard Him so well, maybe haven't spent the time, whatever it would be. That isn't the issue. The issue is not about you. It's Him who says, I want to be with you. I want to speak with you. I want to lead you. And my question is, if you're in that point and you feel that conviction of God this morning, as we get up to worship Him again with that, that song again as well, because He is worthy. I want to pray and agree. I've been doing this for a, a long time in myself, but it's not me laying hands on you. It's the fact that the Spirit of God wants to say, yes, this is your private place. This is what you must deal with. This is how you must deal with it. And I want to speak to you. And if you don't hear him, you can make a decision this morning. Lord, I want to hear you in a better way than ever before. Because I do. And that's what this message is about. It's all about him, this, the Holy Spirit. You know, you ask, you listen to the message today and you ask yourself, but where do I fit in? Where does Jesus fit in my life? Maybe you're asking the question, well, if something happened to me today, I'm not quite sure I would go to heaven. I'd like the opportunity to pray with you if you would allow me. If you just repeat these words, because the Bible says that if you declare and call unto the Lord, Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So I'm going to pray a prayer and I ask you, if you pray it from your heart, and confess with your mouth and believe. The Bible says you're saved. You're born again. All things are passed away and all things are new. So why don't you pray with me? Why don't you stretch your faith as I stretch my faith with you right now and let's put our faith together. I'd like to pray a prayer with you and I ask that you repeat the prayer after me. And the Bible says if you do it by faith, the Lord Jesus will hear and you will be saved. So repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Forgive me of my sins. I make you Lord and Savior Jesus. I know that you died, you rose again on the third day for me. So I thank you right now that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus because I believe on the name of Jesus and have called out on the name of Jesus. If you've prayed this prayer, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things on you. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, we would love to get into contact with you or hear from you. Please head on down to our website www.heritageoffaith.com.au as we would love to hear about the decision that has changed your life. God bless. We're praying for you and we look forward to seeing you soon. Love you.